Let's see if I can make this relevant. It is hoped that you believe the information I'm about to give to you. I do realize that some of you will immediately discard this information and call it a fairy tale. But for those of you who believe, it may answer all questions you have had about this world. Several questions I will put to you. One, do you believe we currently live in a world of great immorality? Two, do you believe men and women's sexuality has been a hotly debated topic on both sides of the fence? Three, do you believe the entertainment world is clouded between reality and imaginary? Four, do you believe the drug industry is a big money-making business? Five, do you believe technology is moving toward a robotic world? Six, do you believe that today's military weapons are unimaginably destructive? There are many reasons people don't believe in God or Yahweh, the Elohim of creation. But the main reason they don't believe is because they don't think they need to. Someone once said, before man could predict the weather, he prayed for it and it was a blessing. But now that man has the knowledge and he understands how it works, he doesn't need Yahweh, right? There are many ancient writings and scrolls with their interpretations that have made it into the world's libraries. But one of the best-selling books is the Bible, whether you believe it or not. And the Bible is one of the books that delve into world history and the future of the world on a global and universal level. But there is one book that by the will of the Most High has begun to resurface that answers many questions of man's history and the future of man. The Book of Enoch. Have you ever gone to a magic show? Perhaps David Copperfield, one of the world's known master illusionists. Magic has been explained in this light. You know it's a trick, but because you don't know how it works, it's magic. Once it is explained, it is no longer magic, but science. Hmm, isn't that interesting? Now I will attempt to make this information relevant. Enoch, or Hanak in Hebrew was the son of Jared and the great grandfather of Noah. Luke chapter 3 verses 36 and 37. Enoch was 65 years old when Methuselah was born and he walked with Yahweh for 365 years before the Most High took him. Genesis chapter 5 verses 21 through 24. The book of Enoch was written for two reasons. One, to save his family from the pending great flood. Two, because the watchers instructed him to write it. The Bible says angels are innumerable. In other words, no one knows the vast number of angels that exist. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 22. All the angels have assignments. Essentially, they are managers of the universe. As the population of men and women increased, Several of these watchers noticed something that got their attention. Daughters were bo being born to men. Beautiful daughters that turned the head of the watchers and they desired these women. Genesis chapter 6 verses 1 through 7. These angels desired children and they collaborated with each other to devise a plan to take the women unto themselves. The book of Enoch chapters 6 to 10 describe the scheme of the angels. Chapter 6 And Semyaza, who was their leader, said unto them, I fear ye will not indeed agree to do this deed, and I alone shall have to pay the penalty of a great sin. And they all answered him and said, Let us all swear an oath. 
and all bind ourselves by mutual importations not to abandon this plan, but do to this thing. Then swear they all together and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. And they were in all two hundred who descended in the days of Jared on the summit of Mount Hermon. These angels collaborated together with an oath? <laughs> in other words, they determined by their own will to have sexual relations with the women of the earth. They knew of their doom by doing this thing, but they all agreed to abandon their heavenly state and become part man and part God. These angels committed sexual sins with the daughters of men and began to corrupt the earth in an untold manner. The women bare children to the angels and those children became giants in the earth. Enoch chapter 6 through chapter 10 and Genesis chapter 6. The giants taught the women spells, charms, and the cutting of roots and how to get high and a number of forbidden knowledge. The offspring of the watchers, the Nephilim, began to rule over man. The Nephilim desired to build their own kingdom. Even today they continue to rule in a different capacity as wicked and evil spirits. They began to abuse man and the animals, and not only did they cannibalize man, they did whatever they desired against both man and beast. Now the word Nephilim is from the Greek term gigantes. In the Septuagint, Nephilim comes from the verb nephal, meaning to fall in general, but it is often associated with violence, hence often translated overthrow, fall upon. In Numbers chapter 13, verses 32 and 33, it says, and they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. Emphasis should be placed upon the fact that they were men of violence who had no respect for other men. They actually ate the lesser average height man and woman of six feet or shorter. They consumed in mass quantity animals whether raw or cooked, Enoch doesn't say. But we know from the record the Nephilim were the most vile ungodly, wicked, and evil creatures the world has ever known. One of the angels by the name Azazel taught men how to kill. He taught them metalworking. He taught them how to make swords and armor. He taught them how to make jewelry. Certain metals like copper and gold increases the electrical conductivity of the body, making you a better receiver. Azazel taught women how to beautify the body and how to apply makeup. This was the beginning of the total corruption of man. Azazel taught astrology and casting spells and the path of the moon. The angels in heaven that did not rebel sought the Most High on putting an end to the corruption upon the earth. Yahweh instructed Raphael to seize Azazel and bind him in chains and cast him in utter darkness amidst jagged stones and jagged edges. Lucifer thinks he can block my way with this. He thinks he can stay my vengeance.
Michael, the archangel, was sent by the Most High to inform Semyaza that they would have to stand by and watch their children kill off one another. Once the Nephilim killed each other as decreed by the Most High, the fallen angels would be imprisoned until the time of their reckoning for the heinous acts of their sins. Then the great flood came upon all the earth in the days of Noah.